in studio with us. A difficult man to bring to studio because he's been traveling around. <laughs> You've been busy, uh, but that means you're doing the work. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not, but it's been tough to l align the diaries. Oh, That's yeah. what I mean. You're exaggerating my importance. You are important. Yeah, I am. You're doing important work. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were, uh, you tr you've been traveling a lot, but I'm glad. Thank you so much. I appreciate you making time. I know how busy uh, things are there in your department. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Mm. How have you been? The last time I spoke to you, you were the minister in the presidency. Well, now you're the Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies. Well, uh, it's a, that is a, the, you're speaking about the past life, fond memory. Yeah. But the new life with a lot of energy, most exciting mm -hmm. and with more focus. With more focus. Uh, yes. Okay. I think if I retire doing this job. You'll I'll be happy, man. Younger. <laughs> 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 okay, cool. There's so much to talk about. Um, I want us to talk about digital transformation, the SABC, the Post Bank. Um, but I want us to start with the post office first um, because there are thousands of jobs that could be lost at the post office. Um, it's a company that's been begging uh, Treasury to assist them, if I'm not mistaken, with just over 3 billion rand. How is that process so far and where is it um, at the post office, that retrenchment process? What a way to start, Clement. <laughs> I, I thought you would start in a softer space. <laughs> no, listen, uh, yeah. thanks, Clement. Uh, all I can say to South Africans is that mm. we, the post office is on a recovery path, uh, having subjected to the best, uh, business rescue uh, practitioner process. Uh, the business rescue plan has been tabled. Mm -hmm. which is due for consideration by creditors. Where I'm sitting, the business plan, as proposed, has got a lot of exciting elements, and it exposes a lot of background, what could have led support to where it is, and they're demonstrating quite a brilliant proposals. And I also want to make the point, uh, if you know sometimes, Clement, these, these processes, they take too long. Mm. If I count properly, if this process has taken more than five months, it has taken too long. Uh, I'm excited about the the business attitude demonstrated by the two young chaps, uh, Anush and uh, Junita. Okay, I, I know that you know as as the minister, as someone who, who who provides the political oversight, you probably want to see the protection of as many jobs as possible. How many are we looking at here? I'm very careful to say the number. All I'm saying, I would prefer as least number as possible. We we can't afford, Clement. We've been trying to build, to create employment. And uh, I want to credit the resilient economy in spite of load shedding and number of things. Mm. It's unbelievable that quarter to quarter we've been re reporting an increase in employment no matter how little the fraction is. And they also the fact that the economy post-COVID is actually bigger than it was mm -hmm. before COVID. It, it explains a resilient economy had things like load shedding and other things not been there. So, so the, the, the issue of jobs, jobs has become number one in the lives of our people. Mm -hmm. So our biggest prayer, but here is the point. Tough choices will have to be made. My attitude is that my experience is an institution like this, stands to employ more South Africans if it is viable. Because when it is viable, it means it makes more money, creates more opportunities, it expands as a business, more people benefit in terms of employment, but millions more get the service. Remember, post office is not just about employing those who are at work. Mm -hmm. It's about ensuring that it is part of the crusade of ensuring that connectivity is accessible to the far-flung people. When connectivity is accessible to far-flung people, it gives them opportunities they wouldn't get if it was not there. Like mm -hmm. the, your digital hubs where sometimes they would find uh, uh, printing machines, uh, uh, email facilities, and all those things, downloading information, loading information. That, that those opportunities are opportunity to SMMEs, mm -hmm. opportunity to individual South Africans who want to go, who want to study, South Africans who want to sell their products. It's bigger than 
8, 000, than a number of workers who are employed by NCQC. But its viability has got this double positive approach that yeah. it, it can employ more at the same time benefit bigger numbers in a broader, in a broader scope of things. Are, are you, as the minister, going to accept when the business rescue process, upon the finalization of the process, they say these are the number of jobs that have to go or are you going to be like other ministers who oversee these SOEs who become resistant to that because often the obsession is to protect the jobs at all costs? And I, I recently had a chat with a senior executive in one of the SOEs who was telling me about how many posts are so redundant. But because government doesn't want to be seen to be like letting people go in an environment where jobs are so needed and where people are desperate for jobs, they end up keeping people even when they're in redundant posts. And, and he was very practical with me. He showed me, and I, I just couldn't believe it because, yes, you're protecting the jobs, but there are certain people who are doing jobs that could be done by two people and you've got 10 people doing a similar thing. So the question is, if the business rescue process is finalized and they say 3,000 jobs have got to be cut Can in I order for this to be vi viable, are you going to accept that? Can I make a controversial statement? And uh, I usually live with the consequences of these statements. Uh, mainly, the state is meant for servicing society. Mainly as a minister, a DG, an employee in the state, mm. are a function of service of, of society. Mm -hmm. Because a flourishing society is more important than the number of people who get employed by government. Remember, society uh, pay tax, they fund government. They are not funding it for anything, they are funding it for themselves. So to, 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 to protect jobs, it should not be at the expense of the societal service. If you want to save jobs, it must be the function of a happy society. So what am I trying to say? I, I take a balance and an approach that ensures that the state is viable because it is a viable state that will actually increase economic activities. Mm -hmm. so, so whatever balance that is taken to the, best, uh, to the best possible way, it must not be taken at the cost of the viability of the post office. Okay. Because a viable post office is the one that may hire even those who might lose jobs. But however, that process is not between the minister and the PPRP. It's between those teams, between the PRPP and the workers using Section 189. Mm -hmm. as, as government, I prefer not to, to interfere in that process. Okay. I am for a viable post office. Mm. Is it possible, and, and what is it going to take to create a viable post office? Is it possible to stabilize this company, restore it to solvency and have it operate sustainably without total reliance on government funding because that's how it's been kept afloat. And I struggle to see it without the constant need for my money as a taxpayer to keep it afloat. You know, Clement, since I got deployed in this job, uh, there's one president of the ANC who was once sent to the Soviet Union. He came back and he said he saw Jerusalem when you saw the, the communist, social, social, socialistic way of ensuring that there's collectivity and whatever, mm. that type of, of ideology, maybe at the risk of messing that quote up. What I'm saying, I've, I've seen a new Jerusalem in the, in the digital technology environment. The, the value of economy that is locked here, the jobs that are locked here, and so on. Um, by the way, if you repeat your question, my apologies. So what I wanted to know is, is it possible to bring it back to viability? No, I'm coming to that. Thank you very much. And, and how do we do that? Yes, yes, yes. Like uh, where it's back to solvency and yes, it's not yes, constantly yes. relying the, on The bailouts. most important thing, post mm. office, primarily is meant to serve a society. In particular, the historically disadvantaged communities, both from the point of social economy and geography. But for it to do that, it must live in the modern ways of making money. The modern ways of making money is efficiency, less cost, more production, 
more money. And in doing so, that post office becomes of service. One of the things you'll be told is that mm. what actually marginalized the post office is that it continues to stay in the old way of doing things. Uh, post, uh, delivering post office, postal services in the old way, and then came in in that space, other institutions that did it digitally. For instance, uh, a post office must guarantee somebody in Ghana that if, uh, if he has posted a letter, if there are people who are still doing that, that within particular days that letter is going to come. Mm -hmm. If uh, a telegram or if a parcel left Jobe, somebody, I'm using Ingandla as, as, as an example of dis disadvantaged communities. If a parcel is coming to Ingandla, they must be able to say, if I'm told that on a particular day it's leaving. In other words, the dependability of the post office must actually increase. You start by successfully serving the poor. At the end of the day, you go higher and even compete uh, where in the market that involves middle class. Mm. You must make money in order to survive today. Uh, you, you, it's not just a charity. You, if you are a charity and you're not making money, you will collapse with the employees. Yeah. I suppose what, what I'm asking is, as a taxpayer, how do I know that this 3.8 billion rand that the post office is asking for is actually go into revitalizing this company. Because if, if I ask you now, Minister, you know about the billions that have already gone to the post office from Treasury. If I ask you, what positive results can you point to at the post office that are as a result of the bailout? Would you be able to show Which me? bailout is being about? Like there's, like there's money that has been sent. I mean, there was a time when they needed a billion rand. I think it was it 2021 or so. So over the years, I'm just saying over the years, no, no, and I know you no, are not there at the time. No, no problem. But I'm, a money, yeah. I'm a successor. In there's time. money, there's taxpayers' <laughs> money that has bailed out the post office. So if I asked, is there a positive thing I can look at and say, look, because of the billions over the years that were sent to the post office, these are the positive results we have seen. I, I don't think the culmination, culminating in the business issue mm. Is is a, is a, is a go, is an intended product of those bailouts. It, it must be a disappointing end. In other words, there isn't much one would want to show. I'll give you an example. If I, I also get a bit contra controversial, there's a, I think it's a 16, 17, 18, 19, and so on. No less than about seven billion, if I remember the amount. Sure. Was put here, seven billion, but it's a big number. It's it's, it's more than three billion. To actually bail the post office between three and four and five, I'll, I'll, I'll check yeah. the number. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll say it's controversial because there's a man who would have said in public he wanted to save the post office. Mark but Barnes. Yes, was not given a chance. The big monies that were deployed in the offices during his time. I said one day to call him Gambin 405, call this man and say, during this period and this period, money was given under your leadership coming from private private sector, with the supposed convention, conventional wisdom of commerce, what happened? Well, he argued that he didn't get the support of the board and the shareholder no, in implementing the, the strategy. No, the point is, he must come and say to you, he must come and say to you, I got one billion in a particular year. Mm. This is what I wanted to do with it, and so and so stop me. That's a general statement. Mm. We know, because I, I want him to, exp to speak for himself. We know a lot of, how do you put it, a lot of, uh, th there's, a, there's a lot of waste that occurred during that time. But I prefer him to do it. All I'm saying is that money was put there and that money didn't deliver. So why should I as a taxpayer, as you are going to treasure with a begging bowl, bowl, believe that actually this bailout you're going to get now you want to treat it differently to the over 3 billion rent the post office has been getting Good. over the years? Because... When I look at what the post office has done, as you have indicated with the bailouts, there's nothing positive to show for it. So now, when you're asking for a bailout, why must South Africans say, okay, we're comfortable with our tax, pay, tax, tax amounts going to save this company? You know, I think it's a public knowledge, Clement, that at a particular point in time, this institution absorbed temporal workers or about 8,000 without clear tasks to carry in the institution. You, you can imagine, uh, if you take a decision like that, it's, 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 it's a deliberate actually putting a nail on the coffin of the institution. 
what am I trying to say? Is that I've been in institutions, Clement, institutions that are managed prudently in terms of allocation of resources from the point of infrastructure, personnel, putting together skilled people, and ensuring that there's a leadership structure, there's a proper strategy, and, and this, this, is, this, this institution is no different. I'm here with a team, uh, especially from the DCDT, the department. We put together a team. We're turning around and I'm going to, Postbank, I'm sure you heard about Postbank. It's quiet now. Mm -hmm. It's not an accident of history. It's the kind of people who have deployed there who are stabilizing that institution to live a dream of a state bank. When you deploy people, when you have a clear strategy what you want to achieve, you deploy appropriate resources, you don't deploy friends, you deploy capable people. I've been there before. I have never been disappointed by a team of capable people. And secondly, or lastly, we'll report to our people when we, when we, when we, when we allocate these monies that here is your money. The BRP is proposing this plan. It's achievable if the following things are done. Here is our plan to do those things. Mm. So there'll be transparency. We'll go to portfolio committee. We'll report to communities and so on and other relevant issues, AG mm. and so on. We've done, I've been part of such exercises before. Mm. Those exercises have worked. I see no difference. Why can't they work now? So if that fails and there's a 3.8 billion that's sent to the post office and three years later there's still not change or two years later, I must call you back into studio oh, and please. say take accountability. I'll, I'll take the In fact, I, I, don't wait for my call. Just send a resignation letter and say, I have failed I, I, you, I South Africans. I don't have, I'll surprise you even before you think about it. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm not scared of accounting. <laughs> well, I'll call you. You know, yeah. I, I can I know, be very persistent. I know. Pe I know how you pester. So, yeah. is the solution then to identify? And I wonder if this process has been done already to identify strategic opportunities and and private partnerships in order to revitalize the business of the post office. Because as you said, they need to modernize mm. uh, their technological so, advances. Um, also, there's a competitive environment now. Mm. Uh, are they even up to par? You see, this plan resonates with what was proposed before. You know what happened? Uh, during Minister uh, Shabini's time, mm -hmm. they submitted to cabinet something that people ridicule call it the business of the post office of tomorrow. It was a brilliant strategy. But it came at a time when we were no longer able to service uh, mm -hmm. that. So then the institution finds itself in liquidation and so on. If you look at this proposed business plan, there's a lot of its elements are included in this. So, uh, so that two comma four billion mm. is deployed to turn around this business rescue plan and another amount which was proposed uh, for the court to be able to accept uh, the direction. Yes. Mm, yeah. sure um, uh, are you referring to the post office of tomorrow? Yes. That strategy. Oh, yes, I remember yes, that. Yes. Lord, if you know it, you read it, yeah. and you look at this plan, yeah. you'll be surprised. Yes. Significant number of its elements. Yeah. And because it is a, it is about all right, by the way, I remember the question you asked. Mm. Is about are we able to take advantage of strategic opportunities? Yeah, even private public Partnership, partnerships. We are open to partnership. But the key thing is that whatever relationship we have with whoever it must never sacrifice the the mandate to actually make sure that mm -hmm. poor people have got access to communication. Mm. So in other words, whatever relationship we have, it must protect this mandate. At the same time, it must also give us an opportunity to grow and be a better institution. Yeah, and just for the benefit of, of our listeners, this post office of tomorrow, uh, because the postal sector is, is changing, it, it was a strategy that aims to reposition this entity and make it more competitive um, and relevant. And that strategy involved digitizing SAPO uh, to bring it up to date with the technological developments in the postal sector. They wanted to digitize SAPO to also yes. just get, uh, allow SAPO to reclaim its share and, and, um, and, in the market. And, and get into the logistic mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and try to strike partnerships there mm -hmm. that sustain it both from this point of sustainability as an institution at the same time, ensuring that the services for which is this historical meant, yeah. those services continue. What about the post bank? Because um, the question I've often asked myself, it's, it's whether, whether it will be the newest fully-fledged state bank. The ANC took a resolution that we need a state bank. 
the post bank is supposed to somehow clear the way for it uh, the president recently signed the south african post bank amendment act into law which basically paves the way for its registration in terms of the banks act where are we um, with the post bank i mean the how many board members resigned recently all but one all but, but one all, when, are you, but when are you replacing she, she the board leave, but she had to leave oh one she's day. gone now no, as well no. we 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 asked her to leave because you remember when those other guys left they preempted a decision who could have been taken in because you were going to fire them <laughs> i'm saying a decision who could have been taken in the agf and this this other member young lady decided to attend mm. but because she, she had no different uh, accountability as compared to others mm. and there's not she, she, she said nothing that could actually help it get treated differently mm. so she was asked to leave when are she you replacing us, the board she has taken us to court we are almost at the culmination point now remember i i said on a press briefing on that day the nomination we, we, we what to call calls we do, we done who was done with that we have moved the distance now we hope before the end of this year will be done because a post a post a post office a post bank board is not just like an board it, it has got more rigorous and onerous processes because if you want in really to to produce a well bank a world class bank uh, you must make sure that those people are vetted and a number of things are done mm -hmm. and they in this some critical skills that you require there so we're working on all those issues i expect that by the end of the year we are done so that maybe in first cabinet next year gets the tabling of that but the administrator now who is acting as a as an accounting authority is doing wonderful work with the with the team that is there but with the board members that are, that that resigned did they have knowledge and experience around the financial you know industry I, and matters because they're dealing with the post bank i think some of them without being i'm very careful to think i remember all their skills some of them had uh, relevant skills but the problem is that it, it was not necessarily more of, of a problem of their skills it is the leadership they provided and the consequences of that leadership for instance uh, i've said several times that for three years that uh, bank was on a disclaimer is the worst thing that any bank any financial institution can afford ideally you don't want a single finding in a financial institution because mm -hmm. you are a repository mm. of people's what to call so even the reserve bank raised a lot of concerns <laughs> yes. about how they were running Three things yes disclaimer and the worst they uh, had a, a contract which was illegally uh, legally they, they 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 extended that contract illegally they paid it illegally over and above that under that contract millions were siphoned out of the bank where fake contracts fake accounts were established and disappeared no less than 150 million disappeared in that bank a lot of tracks are being followed other people are being charged and there's even a suspicion of syndicate so kpmg findings which led us to making the board to account gave us a lot of findings about what was unacceptable how that board was working in any regular way and so on. i mean to to continue with a tender whose time has expired and then treasury telling you that you can continue and you continue in spite of all the issues that were happening mishaps under that what and that the time. court cases because yes. there are some court judgments that felt i mean Yes. So the point I'm making it's it's not much about the skills is how they led. I usually say you can have Clement as many skills as you have in an institution. If there's no leadership, mm. those skills are as good as nothing. But you can have limited skills. I've seen this great leadership will will wonder you on how it tends to improvise. Mm. And I wonder how we don't have great leadership in many of our SOEs because that's the reason they are at a point where they are now. Someone was asking about these modern ways um, that we are talking about that you envision for the post office. Uh, what are they? Can you give us a closer look at when you talk about post office advancing um, and also meeting the technological advances, um, what are you talking about? It's, a, it's an office which is run on e-service platforms, mm -hmm. uh, which is connected, digitized, and which is logistically focused. 
in other words, it must be a post office that you can interact with it without driving to it. Mm -hmm. A post office that can actually uh, affect product movement without, uh, and a healthy combination between driving and at the same time being uh, uh, logistical in this modern way. So it's digitized, it's in logistics, it's e-commerce. In other words, it's an office, post office that you interact with it at home. Mm -hmm. You talk with it at home, you watch it at home as it actually moves your parcel towards yourself. Mm. You track your parcel and so on. A post office that is able to answer questions instantly. A post office whose plan is in the website. You know it, you know what it provides, you know what it does not provide. A post office whose plan, as you open online, you know exactly when is it closing, who is dealing with what and so on. An office, a post office that is modernly organized, that is dependable, as competitive as other logistic institutions that you have around. Yeah, there, there was a time, um, I remember when I hosted the post office CEO, uh, must have been around 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And and I, I and I, I was asking about the legal battle between SAPO and, and the private courier companies to obtain a monopoly on the delivery of packages weighing less than one kilogram. Um, does the post office want a monopoly on all parcels delivering or all parcel deliveries under one kilogram? I'm asking that because I'm just wondering if you wanted this private public partnership, how are you opening up the door to the private sector to come without too many restrictions? Uh, that's an interesting debate. Uh, if I remember, it has gone to court. I'm not sure at what stage it is now. Remember, a post office has to offer services where these commercial institutions, most of them do not, because they only offer services where there are guaranteed margins. Mm -hmm. Now, for the post, and as post office does this, uh, it is not allowed to act, uh, how do I put it? Uh, in, a, in a village which has got about, how many? Five or 20 homes mm -hmm. with little as a revenue. The South African uh, law entitles those South Africans access to communication. Now, post office cannot say, I'm not going to deliver services to those 20 homes because there's not much revenue I'm going to get. You need to find then a balance. There must be a market which is actually exclusively meant for the post office to sustain itself in as far as being able to offer those services to anyone. Mm. But that post office should not depend only on that exclusion. It must also be a post office that actually take advantage of that exclusion at the same time, mm. uh, execute it in a manner that is dependable and so on. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we, 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 our dream is that we, a post office must be so viable beyond depending on, on that what to call, on that exclusion. Mm. We hope one day we'll reach where we say, you know what, we don't care whether we, we, there's an exclusion or not, we are viable enough to service both the poor and the rich. Okay. But currently, as a development, as, as, as a developing country, you cannot make a mistake of not making sure that that platform mm. and that space is protected. Do, do you have confidence um, that the post bank can take on these established um, privately owned banks by offering services uh, to the unbanked? Um, it has to. You know, South Africa is receiving service to few banks that are so comfortable, uh, irrespective of the cost at which they give service. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of clients they have, it's enough to keep them what to call, to keep them afloat. So they're not much worried about the huge numbers that are excluded, be it the SMMEs, startups, ordinary people and so on, masakane and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of unbanked community, which is not lucrative to these banks. Yet, if you leave that community behind, you are actually perpetuating inequality and so on. And, and when people are poor, poverty is not a stagnant uh, phenomenon. It continues to go worse. And at, at, at some stage, even they, those banks, will realize that it's not a prudent thing to do. But how do you do that? You intervene with a with 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 world-class state bank. Mm. 
that is that that takes those people and take them from the lowest level they are to another level in doing so i have no doubt in my mind stats have demonstrated there's a lot of smmes that are excluded a lot of ordinary south africans that are excluded whose whose money could be actually taken care of somewhere yeah. where they can be guided trained educated to become better bank a bank to a to call society yeah but but then this so what am i saying yeah a well run bank of the state others you can go to india i can it's, it's not a, a dream thing mm. other countries have done this developing country india i've just gone through their phases where they came from where they are mm. so if human beings in india can do human beings yeah. in south africa can run so we need to just sort out the government struct the governance yes. structures the, the system issue is the technological there, shortfalls okay so even put that aside right even the technological um shortfalls the governance structures the failures there um maybe the dependence on the post office and then you also have capital demands which are a thing for sustainable banks where is the money going to come from already our our bank is some kind of capitalized there's a it's not only the grant uh social grant people who are there there are clients I've just forgotten the number I think it's more than a million or something like that I don't I, I'm not keeping that figure now but how do you get capitalized you get capitalized as a banking institution when you offer one services that can make difference to the prospective bankers mm mm-hmm. two that then when they look at you analyze you analyze how you're organized they must have no doubt that you will do that and uh, it must be easy for the state bank to bank state money Deba- different departments mm. i'll give you another example uh, you know sita for instance the guys who have just deployed in sita would have demonstrated to us that uh, they they only out of 100 billion that the state spent in the it sector sita is only having about 7 billion something which is ridiculous quite disgraceful and they argue and what i like is the positive attitude they made they said no we're not entitled to be used by the state institutions but we must give services that earn us preference mm. so that's the kind of bank you need and that bank is doable because market for that bank is there yeah just sort out paying social yes, grants because yes. if you can't do well, that but we stabilize in the past three months ends i think is quiet now we are continuing to improve for instance the cash payment points is one thing that we're going to phase out because that is a very you go and hire <laughs> this 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 a this a fidelity mm. van to pay 20 people and pay huge money mm. which is not worth the cost that is incurred well, we're intervening on those issues. have you realized though that other players have taken up the slack when it comes to banking services outlets i mean i think shoprite uh, even pick and pay as well uh spa they already offer some form of service to consumers who wish to transact through low cost banks such as time bank so um there's already competition out there so if you're not going to be solid about actually making it viable there are other players that are already they're, they're, infiltrating the market there are other players capitec has been the leader in the past capitec, years yes. others have come in after capitec mm. and i can tell you there will always there's a huge market even even shop mm. right even pick and pay they are not going to access because there's a level of margin they are not go, they are not going to be prepared mm. we need a state bank that is aggressive that is able to accumulate capital in a viable way in a productive way with healthy returns but at the same time which is not scared of pulling out pulling out of the dark the unbanked society and we we, we can tra- we can change the proportions in south africa mm. of the uh, uh, of the unbankers against the bank in a, to a better ratio than it is now yeah um yeah i mean i i do think that, that you can be a serious contender um as the post bank um if you want to reach that this, lower this lsm we just need to yeah when people they want to loan money to smes mm. uh, they want them to have a particular capital and so on i've got a friend for i never asked that friend to to ask me to allow to 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 quote she was running microfinance she she had a loan book of 100% collection what does she do she she give money to the sme mm-hmm. and say on condition that you will actually live under this program 
more than 8 or 90 percent of those people have actually succeeded and at the same time they have returned what to call the loan. Mm. You need a, a bank, a state bank, which is predisposed and inclined to actually empathize with the situation of the unbanked mm. and actually get into that space and walk with them up. And that's doable. Mm. As long as you raise a, he a healthy capital that, uh, that sustains healthy returns, which keep you afloat as a bank because you, it's useless to be a charitable bank that is going down. Yeah. Are you, in raising that capital, are you going to ask Treasury or are you going to use, as you said, already people that are already within the system? The, the, the post-bank where it is now, and I'm very careful to commit this to the post-bank where it is now, with proper plans, uh, may need much to keep, go to, may, may, may need some mm. from Treasury but in a short space of time, it might not need that. Okay. Uh, I'm not giving you a definite answer, but the, the, the team that we've put together, which is actually rebuilding, reinforcing itself, yeah. it's men and women. We've got already a CEO who within eight months, if we can show you how she has turned around the thing, pulled in a, an, a, an audit chief executive, pulled in a CFO. We want to see a CEO, mm. a CEO coming in in January. They are dealing with control issues, with uh, audit issues, just to clean governance issues, yeah. to make sure that the core control issues are in place yeah. so and that people can whatever. And you said the board, you're looking at what, January? Uh, around January, that's my finalizing crossing the fingers because okay. there are certain processes, yes. Let's go to the listeners now. I'm going to ask you to please put on the, the, the headphones and come closer to, to the mic minister. Tabucho, you're calling us from Senton. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Clement. Thank you for taking my call. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Good, good, mo good morning, good morning, Bruce. I just want to know. Oh, yes, Shona Pans. No, yes, I, know Pans. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you focus on the post uh, office more. However, I've got this critical question I want to ask. What are you doing uh, in your ministry to empower these young, beautiful South Africans who are so creative, they can create beautiful platforms? Why are we always on... Uh, platforms from the US, China, and, and Europe when we have the capability and the creativity. Oh, so young people who are developing these digital uh, platforms who are very much capable. Yeah, Minister? Uh, there's a digital uh, tech platform which is growing, which I found. We're increasing it at a fast rate where young people who've got ideas are able to interact with it. Mm -hmm. And there is also our digital hubs all over the country. One is here in the Midrand, where young people are able to have access with their new ideas, which get shaped there. Uh, just recently, there are young people who actually approached us, who are successful in the industry, who said they are not asking for money. They want to work with us in a partnership to actually improve that platform so that more young people have got access. In other words, we're already moving in that regard, Shona Pansi. But we've got to move at a, at a, at a pace and a scale that is, that is proportionate to the challenges mm -hmm. that our young people are facing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for responding to that. Let's go to some WhatsApp voice notes. Uh, good morning, Clement. Uh, could you please ask the minister if he is the one responsible for the drafting of the cyber security strategy for the country? And if the answer is yes, then we need to ask him when are we going to be getting that strategy because we still relying on some very old documents and you can't be talking digital transformation without without attending to the risks that are that 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 are, that, mm -hmm. that are posed by cyber crime and and how you're going to deal with those particular risks and where is the strategy thank you yeah and we we've been vulnerable hey eh? the post bank itself um but also um some uh government departments as well are you responsible for drafting that cyber security strategy? No, no it's in the security cluster. Mm -hmm. But as a digital and technology department, we've got an interest because the broader cyber uh, cyber environment is our responsibility. But I cannot be able to give you a date, but because now you have raised it, I will check the date mm -hmm. of, of, the, of, of the time frame. Let me say, I think the question he is raising is very crucial. Cyber security has become the issue. Mm -hmm. Without waste of your time, for instance, we were in the broad, broad, broad infra core in New York, mm -hmm. looking at the key pillars of the, for the SMMEs. One of the pillars there 
is to ensure that as SMMEs do business in the in the in the in the in the IT platform, they need to guarantee security, to guarantee security and everything in as far as to the clients that they are servicing. There are about five pillars. One, secure network, affordable network, mm. knowledge and skills, and also their knowledge of relevance of online. But the key thing in those pillars mm. is make sure that they must guarantee that when the clients are doing business with them, they are doing mm. business with them in a safe or to call environment. So I agree with him. This is one niche issue that has become very huge, but I don't want to take a chance and mm. assume the timelines because it's mainly in the security yeah. class. And, and speaking of digital transformation, what's the plan to try and accelerate that? Because there's a large... Um, proportion of in fact the african population broadly about 60% if i'm not if i'm not mistaken that are excluded from the digital economy uh, whether due to physical infrastructure barriers or the limited availability of suitable and affordable digital um, devices and services how do you change that because you need a strategy to even make these smartphone devices even more affordable yeah the the sa connect which was revised last year, 2022, uh, offers a three-dimensional strategy. Uh, one is that CETA to connect uh, government institutions, uh, telcos who we gave a spectrum to connect no less than 33,000 sites. Mm. But the major area of SA Connect is a, is a connection of homes. We anticipate that uh, in, from 2022 last year, in 36 months, no less than 5 uh, million homes must have been connected. We hope by end of March, we'll be no less than 700,000 homes connected from this year. As I'm speaking to you now, we're already demonstrating, we've done a demo in Mount Elif a uh, few days ago, one in, uh, in Kokstad, we are going to Mudimule in January. One in Kokstad was actually exciting. In Kokstad, in Ward 1, we've done what we call a mesh network. The whole 1,600 ward is fully connected continuously. In other words, inter-house, inter-space, as children are playing in the street, in the churches. We tested it. Media was there. Same thing in Mount But what is key there is this SA Connect, what it does in order to get to combat the cost challenge, we are leveraging infrastructure so that towards uh, the, the, the w w w approaches are like this. Small business for every wifer, for every hotspot that you install, we give you a certain amount. And then the other one called uh, uh, broadband stimul uh, uh, access stim st access what to call uh, 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 facilitation. What it does for every home you connect, we give you no less than two thousand. What are we doing? We are trying to make sure that SMME is that that complete the connection to homes, mm. participate in this business at a later cost, and that cost translate in homes. These homes now in the rural are able to pay five hundred per gig which is 90 rand if okay. you to pay to other institutions. Just just lastly, because I'm out of time, the SABC minister, it's it's still troubled. Um, they've implemented a turnaround strategy there over the past three years. There was capital injection, but it's still posting some losses. Let me just say quickly to you, if I started the tale, mm. we, we have agreed that we are not fully satisfied how the 3.2 billion was spent. At face value, it leaves much to be desired because everything was done. But what it does, it never changes. It is, it is the insolvency of the institution. So we, I have actually commissioned the DG to make sure that we get closer to that. That will be done by the department, not by the SAPC. Of course, working together with the SAPC. By the end of today, it's a, I don't know, is it fourth, fifth, fifth. Last week, SAPC must have completed a turnaround that must be submitted to my office. One other exciting thing, SABC now, as you know, has hired, has agreed to hire a CEO. What excites me unanimously 
the CO would start at about March. I have negotiated with MTN that that's too long. So they seem to want to consider that she should start by 1st of January. Mm -hmm. I'm even negotiating that if she cannot share her time now, because SABC can't wait for that. And also they have hired now uh, a sales, which is a key area, which is a revenue area. It's a lady called Cindy Diamond, who's got quite a brilliant, what to call, track record. In the regulatory space, they have hired a chap called Kolile uh, Majija. So these are uh, material issues of interventions yeah. that are taking place. But the last, point, on, yeah, the, last the, the last point is, key thing that we must achieve in SABC is the stability of quality leadership. Because those who want to expose their products, they want to pay their money to an institution that can sell their products so that they are able to plan short, medium, and long term. Yeah. In other words, our revenue depends on the credibility of our management. We must. There's a lot of changes. We've just been looking now that hundreds of changes have taken place in five years' time at the top level. We need a stable leadership, mm -hmm. quality and stable in SAPC. Oh, Minister, thank you so much for making time. I appreciate you always making time for, for us. Thank you. Hanging out with Clement on 702. Let's walk the talk.